In today's video, we're going to talk about the solution to the Power BI problem that I gave you just a few days ago. If you tried, but if you weren't able to solve it, that's totally okay. I'm going to talk about two solutions. One is a creative Power Query solution and the other one is a nasty DAX solution. Let's get started and take a look at the solutions. Okay, people, let's just quickly recap the problem and then jump over to the solution. Take a look. We have a simple four columnar data. We have the event, client, name, and the date. This is the start date of the event. The problem, however, is that we don't really know when the event ended, but we can infer that from the data. Take a look at Brian Lee's data. So the first three rows of data. I know that Brian started on any particular project on the 6th of September but I do not really have explicit mention of the end date of that project. However, I know that the next project started on the 7th of September. So the previous project, which is this particular project must have ended a day prior. So this project ended, started on the 6th of September, ended also on the 6th of September. The next project, this one started on 7th of September, but when did it end? It actually ended on the 8th of Feb because the next project started on the 9th of Feb right here. So that's how you kind of infer to the previous row of the data. And if you don't really have any previous row, so this is the first row of the data, that means the project is currently going on, right? Until the current date. All right, so that was the problem. And we wanted to kind of find out that if I select any particular date of my calendar table, I should be able to know that what employee is working for what client on what particular date. And that could only be possible if you get all the dates between the start date and the end date of the event. Now, a lot of people try to refer to the previous row in different creative ways. I'm going to talk about my creative way to refer to the previous row, which I learned from MK's blog, which is not only efficient, but also ridiculously fast on larger data sets. Let's just jump over to Power BI and start solving this in Power Query. All right, before I start to crack this problem down in Power Query, I really want to explain you the process of referring to the previous row in a more clear manner, diagrammatically, so that you don't really get lost in the code. Please take a look at my screen. So we have four columns of the data, like we had it in Excel. And the first thing that I would want to do is, since I want to get the previous row of the date column, I'm going to pull out the date column from this data. So this date column, I will extract it as a separate column. That's part one. Once I take out the date column, I'm going to get rid of the last row of the data. Now that I only have two dates left, I'm going to insert a pseudo null column or null value at the start of it. And you can see that since the last row is removed and this row is removed and both of these rows have actually come down because there is a null value at the start. And if you take a look, all that we have been able to do is get to the previous row. So against the sixth, I am taking a look at the seventh, which is nothing but the previous row of the data. And against the seventh, I'm taking a look at the ninth, which is nothing but the previous row of the data. The question is, how are you going to do such a thing in Power Query? Let's just go and find it out. All right, people, I'm in Power Query. The data has been loaded. Let's just start by referring to the previous row of the data. The problem that we are going to face right at the start is that as soon as I refer to the previous row for Carl, the problem is that it's going to start to refer to the previous row, but that row belongs to Brian. So I don't really want to mix, mismatch the data uh, between two different employees, right? So what I will do is obviously, obviously group the data by different um, employees that we have and then get the table for that particular employee. Now, if I peek into this particular table, I'm going to see that I have different dates right here. And against the sixth, I would want to have the previous date against this. I would want to have the previous date. So the tables are isolated and contained in different cells. And let's just start to refer to the previous row. The first thing that I'm going to do right here is extract the date column right here. So how do I do that? I'm just going to create a new column. In that column, I'm going to write the name of the table. The tables are there in the all column. This is the all column that I have created, which is where I have multiple tables. From these tables, I would want to extract the date column. I'm just going to refer the column in the square bracket, and that is going to give me a list. Now, as of now, the thing that I absolutely forgot to do was to remove the last row of this particular list. So let me just go ahead and start to modify my function just a little bit. And I'm going to say something like, hey, before you create this into a list, I would want you to do something like table dot remove last n. So take this particular table, which is nothing but all. And why don't you get rid of the last row of this particular table? Now, this particular function is going to give you a table, but last row removed. And then we are extracting the date column of that table. Take a look. What is the output that we get? We again get a list, but the difference this time is that we only get two values and the last 6th of September has been removed from here. Now, the problem is that if I start to feed this list into this table, this list is going to come right at the top, not at the bottom, because we don't really have the null value on the top. So I'm going to add a pseudo null value on this particular list so that the list again has three rows of data and not really two rows of data. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go back to this and I'm just going to maybe concatenate a little null as a list at the start and do that. Okay, now click on OK and then we again have that particular null list right here. Now, the thing that I would want to do now is that this particular list, uh, which is nothing but the end date, needs to be concatenated with uh, this particular table. So I need to have this extra column in here, which and that particular column needs to be picked up from this particular list. How do we do such like a join between two tables from the sideways? What we're going to do is we're going to convert this entire table into a list. So this becomes a list and this also becomes a list and this also becomes a list and this also becomes a list. And then we'll have the fifth list coming from here and this will also become a list. So now we'll be working with five different lists. And once we have the data in five different lists, we'll convert the list back into a table. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's going to be simple. Please take a look. I'm going to start to create a bit of variables in my function and I'm going to start with a bit of let statement in here. And I'm going to say this is nothing but my date list. So date list. All right. And I am just going to maybe put a comma in here and move to the next row. Now, the next thing that I would want to create is convert all of these uh, individual columns of the table into lists. So, and I will get four lists from here. So how do I do that? I'm just going to maybe create a variable called all lists. And I'm just going to say table dot two columns, table dot two columns. And I'm going to say that, hey, here is a table. And in that table, we have four columns. Why don't you convert all the columns of that table into four different lists? I'm just going to feed the all in here and close the bracket. And let's just call this as an output. Take a look at what do we get? So I'm just going to say the in and I'm going to say all list is my output. I'm just going to say, OK, and we again get a list. But this time, this list is going to contain four different lists. This four different lists is nothing but four different columns of the first table that we have here. OK, pretty good. Now, we'll start to do a bit of concatenation. So this is a list of four uh, different columns and this is a list which has one column and we'll concatenate these two so that we have five different lists which are nothing but five different columns of the table. The problem however is that as soon as you create a list, list is a single columnar data which doesn't really have the column header and once we convert everything back into a table we would need the column headers that were initially there in the data set. So we would want to also create a step in here that takes care of the column headers. I'm going to create that step right here. So I'm just going to call this as column headers and I'm going to pick up the names of the column headers from this table. So there are four different columns in this table which has got headers and I will pick up those headers. The fifth column is the column that I have created, which is nothing but this list, which is the list which has got uh, the null value on the top, which is where I will manually rename that particular header as last date or something. So what do I do? I use a function called table dot column headers or column names I think so column names and I'm just gonna maybe write the name of the table which is nothing but all in our scenario and I'm gonna say that this is going to give you a list which will have all the names of the columns but I would also want to concatenate one additional column which is going to be nothing but last date uh, or let's just say end date all right and that is pretty much it and this is obviously going to be like a list and let's just call this as column headers. Let's just take a look at the output so that we are sure that we're doing the right thing. If I just click right here, we have different five different columns and these five columns will actually constitute my entire table. Now that we have the single list, which is nothing but the end date and the four lists, which are the columns of the table, we also have the headers. Let's just put together a full table that has everything. So I'm just going to go back right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate the lists that we have. So here are my four lists and this is my one single list. Let's just concatenate that together. So I'm just going to call this as concat list and I'm going to say something like, uh, why don't you take this particular list? Just put a comma in here. So why don't you take this particular list, which is all list and concatenate that with my date list. All right. And let's just uh, call this as concat list and let's just take a look at what's the output. If I click right here, I'm just now going to get five different lists. So these are four different lists of the four columns and this actually appeared as a single value, right? So we don't really want to have this appeared as individual values. We would want to pack this into a form of a list. So let's just go revise the code a bit and I will say that the date list is going to come into curly brackets because that will be accepted as a list. Now, if I take a look, this is going to be five different lists and we have also got five different headers. Now, 
put together all of the things together so I'm just gonna say that hey I would want the output to be in a form of a table which is going to be created from multiple lists together so I'm gonna use something like table dot from columns uh, I think spelling is wrong all right table dot from columns and you can see that it's asking you for lists hey, where are your lists so here are my concat list and that's it and it's also going to ask you hey do you have any column headers that you'd like to supply sure enough we have different column headers that we would like to supply and say okay and we get a table again the difference between this table and this table is that it's going to have that one extra column combined sideways that gives you that extra previous row reference that we wanted to create all right now that we have this column for every single table that we have which actually refers to the previous row what we can do is we can open up all these tables together and combine the data of all the tables now note that this particular table right here has all the columns that we need, all the five columns. It has the event, the client, the name, the date, and the end date. We don't really need the name column or the all column, right? So what do we do? I'm gonna create a new step in here. And in that new step, I'm just gonna take this particular custom column and combine the tables from this. So I'm just gonna say something like table.combine. Which tables do I want to combine? I want to combine all the tables in this particular custom column right here. So I'm just going to maybe feed the custom column in here and close the bracket and press enter. I think I made a bracket mistake, press enter. And this is now my entire data. All right, pretty good. Now the problem, however, that we forgot to address is that if this particular event was starting on the 6th and it should not really end on the 7th, it should actually end on the 6th. So we need to take minus 1 from this particular date and call this as a previous date. Which ideally I could do that, do that in the previous step itself. So I can just go back to this particular step and I can say that, hey, here is my date list and every single item from this particular date list needs to be subtracted minus 1. So I'm just going to just come back right here. I'm just going to say date, okay, let's just say uh, list dot transform and I'm going to say, hey, here is a list and why don't you pick up each item of this list and say that please not date dot from date dot add days and every date should be like subtracted one from it and that should be it right so list dot transform works on the list that we had received and it just takes off a day from every single date that we have okay pretty good let's just take a look at the output and you can see that this is from 6th of september to the 6th of September, 7th of September, to the 8th of Feb, so on and so forth. All right, we still have the nulls missing, which is where you ideally should have the current date. And I think we can just take care of that as well. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new column in here. Now that we have the start date and the end date, what we can do is we can create a list that takes a look at the start date, takes a look at the end date, and creates all the dates which are in between the start date and the end date. And I'm going to just maybe open up a new column in here and I have already copied a piece of code and I can just paste that in here and this code is going to be good for that particular thing. Now I'm sure you know how do you create a list but let me just take you through this piece of simple code. So what I have done here is that I'm taking a look at the start date which is nothing but this particular date and I'm taking a look at the end date which is nothing but this particular date and I'm just creating all the dates in between. And just in case if you have a null value uh, in that scenario this formula is going to give you an error in that scenario, I still create the date from the start date until the end date, but the only difference is that I take today's date in Power Query. And date, time, fixed, local, now is the way to get to today's date. All right. Now, once I click on OK, I get a list. If I peek into that list, this list is going to give me all the dates from 9th of Feb 2022 until the current date, which is 23rd of June, which is when I'm recording this video. All right. Now I'm just going to open up this particular column, expand to new rows. This gets all the rows right here. I'm going to convert this back into a date. And I think, and let's just also name this column as all dates, all dates. And this is good enough. I will just call this as all dates. And this is also going to be all dates. All right, all the errors have been fixed. Now that we have the entire data set up, let's just load this into Power BI. And this is going to be like a ridiculously easy solution in Power BI. All right, back in Power BI. And if you've stuck around all this while and taken a look at the crazy referring to the previous row solution in Power Query, the benefit of doing all of that hard work in Power Query and shaping up the data is that we'll have to write no DAX whatsoever. This is just purely going to work based on the relationship that we create. Take a look. This is the all dates column that we created, which had all the dates between the start date 
and the end date and expanded number of rows obviously and this has been linked with my calendar date column right here so if you take a look at this relationship all dates in the calendar dates have been linked pretty good if i just jump over to the visual we have made a very simple pivot table visual which is where we have the date uh, this is the calendar date the client the event and the name is coming from the standard table and now if i just go here and filter for any particular date i can take a look at that what employee was working on what client and what event and things like that. I can even probably filter for any particular employee and take a look at where that employee was engaged on what particular date. That is the end of um, Power Query Solution. All right, now let's just start with the DAX solution. And this solution is nasty because what we want to create using DAX is multiple rows like the way that we have got in the Power Query solution. Now, this is particularly very hard to do. And let's just take a look at the solution step by step. So I'm going to swiftly take you through the solution. The first part is that I have loaded the table in, a, in the exact shape and form as it is from Excel and I've not done any, any sort of transformation. So the data is at, as it is and it has about 50, 60 rows of data. The tables are not expanded and we don't really have the end date column. Now, if you take a look at the data model, this particular as is data holds no connection or relationship with the calendar table as of now, right? And I'm not even going to create it. All right. Now, let's just go ahead and start to solve the problem. What I have been able to do is create that standard four columnar pivot table, which is where I have the start of the event, the client, the event and the name. And using a measure, I'm trying to find the end date of the project. Now, this particular end date in Power Query was received using the previous row. The same process of getting the previous row, I have done it using DAX. Please take a look. Now, if you take a look at this finish measure, all that I'm doing is applying a bunch of filters and I'm just finding out what is the minimum date using a calendar function. All right, that's pretty much it. I'm just subtracting one day from it. Now, this is not very complicated. And once I drag this particular measure into this particular pivot table, I get something like this. The problem, however, is that I would want to generate all the rows between, let's say, 9th of Feb and 23rd of June, which is the date today, right? And I would want to generate all the dates so that if I'm able to filter any particular date between these two dates, the table should give me all the dates in between. Now, how do we do that? Now, you can do that using a generate function or a generate series function, but it's going to get really, really messy. And the simple way to do that is something like this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get rid of the finish measure from here and I'm just going to put the calendar date right here. Now, because the calendar date holds no uh, connection with my pivot table, obviously this is going to give me an error because this particular calendar date has got no connection with this particular date. Now, what I have been able to do is I have been able to build this particular measure, which is the check measure. All this check measure is doing is that it's taking a look at the start of the event and the end of the event, which is my finish date, the measure that I have created and finding out that if the calendar date is falling between that particular series of dates that we have created or not, that's all. And if it's falling, it just gives me a one. If it's not falling, it doesn't give me a one. Now, this is good enough to build that pseudo relationship that will extend the number of rows. Please take a look. So if I just build this check measure into my pivot table and I now pretty much get the same output like I was getting it earlier, but this is a very nasty way of solving the problem. It just works the same way and I can filter on any particular date and I can take a look at Brian's data or I can just take a look at the data in general and this works just the same way. Nasty solution, but it kind of works. I would tend to prefer a cleaner Power Query solution that is easier for the user to maintain. All right, that's been it. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while. Indeed, this was a very long one and maybe a bit too technical as well. Let me know if you have any questions around any of the things that we have discussed today and you would want more clarity on that. Put down your questions in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a big shout out to everybody who participated in this challenge and posted their answers either on YouTube comments or blog comments or anywhere else. Thank you so much for spending our time to do this problem and post out your answers. A big, big, big round of applause to all of you. And in the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're starting out with Power BI and DAX and Power Query seem too hard to get around, solve hard problems and get to your own level of sophistication. I'd highly recommend you to take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye. Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the Power BI problem that I gave you just a few days ago. And we'll take a look at a few create create.